Would you support this continuing resolution coming out of the Senate to keep the government from shutting down? Well, I hope we don't shut it down, but it's going to be the Schumer shutdown. You know, the thing about it is we've been wanting to do all these individual bills and get them done over the summer. We got them out of committee in the Senate, but Schumer wants to yeah. keep adding things to this. And I'm not going to vote for a $4.5 billion to go to Ukraine. I haven't voted for a dime to go over there because uh, we need money here in this country. We need to think about uh, America first. And, you know, American taxpayers deserve better than this, but they're going to try to push it through. I don't think it'll pass. Really don't. How is this the Schumer shutdown when Senator Mitch McConnell, McConnell says it's a responsible step forward? And at the same time, you're having Speaker McCarthy really not been able to control any faction of his party, whether it's the hard right or the centrist. How is it not a McCarthy shutdown or a McConnell shutdown or a lawmakers writ large shutdown, Senator? Well, the big thing, too, is you got to think about uh, in the Senate, we've been wanting to cut back on the spending you know, we're, we're, it's out of control. I mean, I don't think people really understand how far in debt we are, and we're printing like sixty thousand dollars a second, and uh, we want to continue to spend. We can't sustain this, and so sooner or later, we got to make some tough decisions. Uh, but uh, Senator Schumer doesn't want to play ball. Uh, he, the ball's in his court in the Senate, but it's not in his court in the House, and he can't control the House. That's the reason he's trying to play hardball in the Senate. I don't think it'll fly. I, I, I hate that we have some kind of shutdown. But sooner or later, we're going to, have to pay the price for this, and we won't. So you pay won't it. vote American for this taxpayer. continuing resolution. You won't vote for this continuing resolution, even though you don't want to see the government shut down. Exactly. I don't, and again, I don't think it'll it'll go through. Not with four and a half B, and I think you're going to have some people that are going to really object to this. Uh, and it don't, won't be just my vote. It'll be a lot of other votes. Well, Senator Anne Marie was referring earlier to the paralysis that we've seen uh, in the House recently, particularly among the Republican conference. And I wonder what your view is on this, as we're seeing a single lawmaker in Congressman Matt Gates, along with a couple of others, depending on, on the day, hold up debate on a defense spending bill, along with other action while threatening as well to fire the Speaker of the House. It's not unlike the way that you're single-handedly blocking military promotions in protest of an issue in the Senate. Do you support Congressman Gates? in his effort? Well, I'm, I'm, I support him in the way that they want all 12 bills to be brought up single-handedly and talked about and not uh, brought up as a group. Uh, that's kind of like the omnibus. But, uh, you know, I, I agree with a lot with, with uh, uh, Congressman Getz uh, says. I, I believe that we be, need to be more self-responsible with what we're doing. Uh, but you know, everybody's got their own opinion. I mean, that's the reason we have so many representatives and so many senators. Everybody's got to speak for the people in their state. And that's what I'm doing. I'm speaking for the people of Alabama. It's time to start quit spending and get back to some reality. So you agree with what Representative Matt Gates is doing on the House side? Well, playing hardball, at the end of the day, they've got, they have to get something done. But he wants all 12 bills to be single-handedly talked about and brought up and discussed. We did that in the Senate. They passed all of them out of committee, and then all of a sudden we wanted to do this minibus of putting four or five uh, of the uh, bills in at one time. A lot of people over here on our side didn't want to do that. Uh, you know, we drag our feet here so much. We could have gotten this done a lot earlier, but uh, we, we've drug our feet all year long. The House has drugged their feet, and it's gotten us in a bad situation where our, our back's against the wall with this shutdown. Well, the, the debate over defense funding has been bogged down uh, because of the politics in the House right now. And, of course, your blockade against military promotions in protest of the Pentagon abortion travel policy remains in place. You've decried what you've called uh, a woke policy, a woke military, uh, Senator, and you voted against the confirmation of General C.Q. Brown as uh, the now chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Is the new chairman woke? I th think he's got some woke policies. I, I like CQ. I've had him in my office several times back when he was chief of the Air Force. Uh, but you he's voted a against person. him. He's a, he's a good person. He believes in what he's doing. We all have, you have to believe in what you're doing. Uh, now, he, he doesn't have really have any authority other than giving advice to the president. He, he's, he's a general, but he's not, not really over the Army, Air Force, Navy. Uh, he has to, to just give uh, information and advice to the president. Uh, I think he'll do a good job, but I heard him say a few things that, that really didn't fit with me in terms of making our military better and better. you got to remember, you know, we have a free what country. What was it, though, specifically, Senator? Well, we have a free country. We have things that, that we need to do to make sure that, that, that we can uphold, and we can't do that without a great, 
hard, strong military. Now, uh, I heard some things that he talked about, about race and things that he wanted to mix into the military. Let me tell you something. Our military is not an equal opportunity employer. We're looking for the best of best to do whatever. We're not lo looking for uh, uh, different groups, social justice groups. We don't want to single-handedly destroy our military from within. We all need to be one. It's like a football team I coach. You can't have different groups. Everybody's got to be together to win. There's no second place in war. And so uh, I listen to all these generals and admirals, and, and we have some great ones. We have some great military people, but there's some in there that have a different agenda to make sure that they get their quotas in. And we're not a quota. Uh, yeah. This is a military that's... But when so you say race, problems. Senator, that that's... That, can, can you tell us what you mean by... Are you talking about enhancing diversity at the Pentagon? What is it about race that bothers you about the new chairman of the Joint Chiefs? Well, he, he came out and said we need we need certain groups, um, more pilots, certain groups to, to have an opportunity to be pilots. Listen, uh, I want it to be on merit. I want our military to be the best. I want the best people. I don't care who they are. Men, women, it doesn't make any difference. Catholics, uh, Protestants. Hey, I want everybody to believe in the one goal that we have in this country for our military is to protect the taxpayers, to protect the United States of America. Don't give me this stuff about equal opportunity because that's not what this military is about. Talk about making the best, training the best, and being the best of this world. Because if we're not, as I said earlier, there's no second place in war. And we live in a very dangerous place right now in terms of our foreign policy. Which is why a lot of people I spoke to speak to at the DOD and the foreign policy apparatus say that what you're doing in terms of your blockade is actually hurting U.S. readiness. You've said on this program that you want Schumer to file cloture, meaning bring each individual nominee to the floor in itself. You talked about the Senate and the House dragging its feet when it comes to spending bills. Well, the research shows that if you were to have cloture on each and every individual nominee, that's 700 hours. That means you would have to work around the clock 24 hours for an entire month to get these military nominees through. If you know at the end of the day these individuals are going to get that vote, whether or not it's uh, within one day or a month or so, why would you put these families, you're a self-described military brat, why would you put these families through that? Well, again, we have to pay the price to make our country the best. Uh, and as you said, there's no, there's nobody up here more military than I am. I believe in this country, and I want a strong, strong military. The problem that we're having right now is with these, with these nominations. Is Chuck Schumer could have started bringing them on board eight, uh, seven months ago? And what we do, we just drug our feet. He just, he thought I'd give up and say, no, I'll just let you do them all at one time. I'm not doing that. Uh, and I told him that at the very beginning. Now, I was the one that did the three last week. I forced his hand to make him do the three nominations last week because I filed a petition to do closure myself. He didn't want me to do it, so he jumped in front of me to, so I wouldn't make him look bad. Uh, he knows how to get this done. I gave back hours, and you're supposed to have 30 hours between closure. I gave back uh, 28 hours and only did two hours per, per nomination. I want to make sure that we have a strong military, but let me tell you, if readiness was a problem right now, I would not be doing this. I've talked to admirals and generals in the field as we speak. There's no job that's not being done. Everything is uh, okay. is going forward. People are working very hard. We have a strong military, but we're going to do it the right way. And again, I've had the Secretary of Air Force, Army, and Navy come after me, pretty much yeah. call me a terrorist and communist. Let me tell you something. Those people work for me. The senators and the Congress over here, they don't. we don't work for them. And we're trying to make it the best we can and take politics out of our military. Our military is becoming so political that we're going to go south when it comes to readiness.